Welcome to the DCC Museum. Trifold is a uh, current status of uh, what we know about uh, ITTS. The ideal dream is that based on Jack's resolutions and findings, we will know uh, we will be able to create better copies or better original um, copies of the uh, master tapes provided by, uh, by, by Jeremy. Right now, we're using a modified DCC-175 with a special cable so that the DCC-175 doesn't recognize that there actually is an original pre-recorded tape in there. That way we can uh, start a process to put new music provided by a causing change on an original digital compact cassette. But in a way, we've bought the entire stock of Philips UK, so at some point in about six or seven years, we might run out. So Jeremy's you know, findings come in handy. What, do, what are we going to do with new tape? That is one problem, so we have a few years to, to figure that out. What we would really like to do is, of course, get as close as possible and even modify um, the tapes that we are going to produce to you with music with the original ITTS information. Uh, ITTS information was a, was a, was a mystery. Um, and it was a mystery because after talking to Kais, uh, they planned this from day one to put lyrics and all kinds of graphical information on the DCC. Uh, the um, inventors, architect, had created the nine track, they only needed eight, plus two analog tra uh, tracks, and the nine track they had sort of left over to produce all kinds of data, timing code, artist information that you still see on the display today. But there could be so much more. And nobody really knew what ITTS was about until maybe three years ago when uh, Jeremy called me and he said there is a person either making a mistake on eBay because he's selling an ITTS DCC video box. Now video and DCC, those are not two words you ever see in a sentence until three years ago because DCC is audio. So um, I contact uh, the person which was uh, an RCA engineer called Rex Brown and I begged him to take it off eBay and you know sell it to the museum because we needed to know what it was and he knew exactly to explain to us what it was. So um, the mastering equipment that Philips sold to the uh, engineers um, all over the globe to, to mastering houses were basically twofold. It was the duplication process and there was a, um, a system with a DCC processor that could contain a 3.5 inch floppy and on that floppy was all the information that normally would be provided with a CD but you could also add the text information and uh, the artist information and the album information what we know but you could also add different things like lyrics you can sync the lyrics to a song you can put uh, even small graphics in and guys told us uh, that they thought ahead, they knew this, this wasn't ready because on the original displays, all the DCC players that we own, those are matrix displays, single line, very basic, you cannot really show that much. But they were thinking ahead, displays will get better and what if we create an, a video output to a DCC recorder so you just hook it up to a television set. So they were planning ahead. But it was super confusing to the engineers. They had no idea what to do. So this became a pet or a hobby project to mastering engineers um, rather than a consistency. So in this document that was provided by, by David Hill, uh, it was the first time we had seen it, it describes pretty clearly what was, um, what was mandatory. And uh, mandatory was that you would have to provide the album information, the artist information, and then um, lyrics, you were sort of on your own, because no label ever provided the lyrics. So then an, 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 a mastering engineer had to type in and sync the lyrics to the song, which you can, as I mentioned, is a lot of work, and uh, so it became a pet project to most of these uh, engineers and uh, we had never seen any DCC album with lyrics on any players before. So now suddenly we had the ITTS video box, which basically has a, an optical in, 
from any PCC uh, player and, uh, and a video out that you can hook up to a television set. And then magic start appearing because then it turns out that there are indeed commercially released albums, which we will show you later, that actually have lyrics that will show on this ITTS box. Um, out of the, it's a very tedious project, project because we have now close to 800 tapes in the museum and every single one of those tapes has at one point been connected to the ITTS just to see what happens if you click on lyrics. And then to make it even more confusing, um, some tapes produced in the United States, uh, like a band called the Scorpions, which is, a Ger I think, a German band, right? Yeah, German. Okay, German band produced in the United States has lyrics, produced in Europe, no lyrics, to make it even more confusing. That's okay. um, so uh, anything Rex Brown did was a pet project, and then we found out anything Mercury United States did they also added a lot, of, uh, a lot of lyrics. So if you would um, hook, um, for instance, an album called Dodo. This is what you would see if you hook the Doro album to um, the ITTS video box. It was mastered in Germany, engineers had no idea what they were doing. That happened a lot because the description was very, uh, very confusing often. So what they chose to do um, with this is that's the information you would normally see, also including the, uh, on, the, on the display. On ITTS you would see X-ray. The track listing that you uh, might have also seen on a YouTube video I, I presented, so you can clearly see what is playing <coughs> and what is coming next. And then they didn't know what to do. So in their uh, fourth, uh, where they say song sheets, where it actually should, should sing, they didn't know how to do that, so they just put in a text document and you are on your own. So this is what you would present. It would not be interactive. So this is uh, a typical uh, situation that we have seen on some albums where they would give you the information, but it would not scroll like a karaoke uh, function. But it is still there and only visible on the, on the, uh, on the ITTS video box. So one of uh, another uh, part of the project which made uh, Jacques uh, so interesting is that if we could create a video output on any DCC player, then all of these tapes would have extra information. At one point, there were prototypes uh, provided by Philips where high-end recorders called Matchline actually had a little display inside, but only two of those were, were built because they were afraid, my goodness, you know, the DCC players already went for $1,000 and up, and the Matchline with a display would have been double as that, and as uh, Case explained, they were trying to just get away from the high-end market right, and they were trying to get into the lower-end market. So this is an example of, um, <coughs> of um, how not to do it. Another example is on the Depeche mode. You have to bear with me because in the Depeche mode it's not even coded corrected. You will only see it for a fraction of a second. Because the, the, the coding is, is, is very delicate, you have to uh, uh, provide an extra bit, switching it on or off, and then uh, what most uh, engineers didn't get is that the, the, the frame rate was only at 6 frames per second in order to get that synced. So it was a complete manual job and it didn't run at the same frame rate. So we also have tapes that where the um, mastering engineer didn't know what to do, so the frame rate of the 9 track is exactly the same as the audio uh, tracks, meaning that everything is coming way too, set, way too fast and not uh, in an accurate format. So, 
Then, uh, so Rex Brown told us the, 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 holy, the holy grail was the Michael Penn album. I don't know if some of you have seen the, the, the YouTube video about that, so we've been looking for that for years. And then finally, when we found it, we paid a fortune to get it. And then it turned out it didn't happen. <laughs> it was the Michael Penn album, which... Uh, I find the most interesting thing about Michael Penn is that he's Sean's Penn brother. So at one point he was the brother-in-law of Madonna, so there you go, right? But I'm being a little bit condescending, but uh, so not even uh, living information out there while uh, Rex Brown engineering this pitched to us that it had to be there. But now everything is, is unclear since we already uh, discussed the, uh, the Scorpions album made in the Netherlands, no lyrics, and in the United States it does have uh, uh, lyrics. So. Potentially, there could be a Michael Penn album produced in the United States that still has these uh, that still has these lyrics. So, how should it look? If you look at the, the Scorpions, uh, the German band uh, in uh, the United States, this is how ITTS should work. because in the um, original tape that Philips provided for shows and demonstration, they went all overboard. They hired a company in London to do all the graphical uh, work for them. And on the original Kermit the Frog, which is uh, interesting because they did a lot of graphics on that one. <laughs> the graphics could change and uh, and they could uh, could divvy it up. The um, only album as a sample ever produced was the um, the Supertramp album, which is not a commercial release. And that is the only album that we know that actually has both features. It will work on the ITTS video box as well as on the last generation of the recorders. So on the ITTS, Supertramp will look... Video that sometimes you know you're in your own bubble in your own circle and you get enthusiastic and I don't have a clear objective but it wasn't until Techmon did a video about it only what is it two months ago that he said yeah no wonder they did that song because if you listen to the lyrics there is like an awful lot of gap between uh, between the lyrics it, it isn't a, a tongue twister it's not a rap album so this would pl display very nicely on a single lined uh, matrix display so here on the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more. So here you can see that you can change uh, in this one even the menu.
51 that I recorded, you lose all the options of the menu, you cannot change the language, but if you click lyrics, the magical thing happens, it goes away and it actually starts working. It was the only album we were ever be able to do that. say I'm uh, with a very few uh, people among the DCC fans that believe that if this would have been released together in, in uh, if DCC would have made it in 1990 and this would have been introduced this is definitely something that analog or mini disc wouldn't have and karaoke was already big in anything uh, Asian related uh, of course here theoretically I mean this is not karaoke because it's actually in sync and karaoke has to come a little bit uh, before that, but that's just a timing issue on, on the on the on the frame rate. So what we try to do is um, combining it with the Jacques project is is being able not only to release official DCCs with the correct info, um, but maybe even go a step further and and find out how this Supertramp album actually works, and then um, create our own lyrics. On uh, music that we will uh, release on causing change, so then you would have a step up to DCC 2.0 because this was never released and because the Super Tramp album um, has never been seen before. We have the Super Tramp album in multiple versions. I brought the uh, the English one uh, with me, which has English and uh, uh, Dutch. We have a Japanese version, which is mastered incorrectly because the frame rate is uh, working in the same way so the, the, we cannot see the characters and they're coming way too way too fast but uh, as of this morning guys bought the korean version so uh, <laughs> we will uh, we will uh, in a demo we will put this in there never never been done before on guys's demo equipment it doesn't work but it might do it on the idts uh, box so I've, I've never done this before and then while he was uh, browsing through his tape, he found a tape called Demonstration Lyrics Tape. We have no idea what's on that. I already get goosebumps just talking about it. <laughs> it's like, I feel like, you know, I'm excavating something and I don't know what's on it. And then it says Supertramp, uh, not the goosebump, uh, Supertramp uh, Demonstration DCC. Yes, so you put it in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put it in, that's, I, I don't hear that. Uh, <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> Then guys bought uh, a high resolution, so ma master that's the highest uh, quality. What's difference on high resolution? This is a real 24-bit uh, uh, mastering. Uh, one of the problems, of course, in, uh, <coughs> is that we were uh, often using, uh, or, or the frequency was using uh, master tapes of CD quality. So you're telling me there's a 24-bit file on this? Yeah, yeah well, there's all, uh, master, uh, DCC tapes are always 24-bit. But if the source material is not 24 bits, you just get a couple of bits that are always zero. Yeah, at the end. Okay. you don't have that. So, uh, and, and that was part of what I planned to demonstrate to you. You can, of course, uh, go for the best, uh, how do you call this, recording system, but there's yeah. a bit more involved. Uh, what microphones have people used? Uh, and what mastering equipment have we used? And, and certainly, the uh, I mean, you have. In your collection now DCCs from uh, Beach Boys and, uh, and, and Jimi Hendrix and they use the most worst the worst kind of mastering equipment uh, you can hear the, 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 the clipping and everything uh, going wrong yeah well you can't get that better with 24 bits it's, it's spoiled yeah. but this one is uh, uh, so a lot of a lot of jazz labels use uh, use high quality the other remark uh, is that this lyric problem that you described, uh, that's a rights issue. 
You don't have the rights issue? Yeah, of course. You don't have the rights to publish lyrics in Germany when you have to pay off uh, hundreds of uh, other uh, uh, rights companies again. Okay. And in the United States, it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, but, and then indeed the, the whole sinking job is up to the uh, taste of. Uh, but Kees, that explains why the Scorpions, a German band, didn't yeah, have the lyrics yeah, in Germany I mean, because it was, totally a rights, it was a rights problem. Yeah, to, I'm totally okay. not surprised. And I mean, uh, record companies have a, a special person who does only one thing, and that is check on all the published material if there's not a spelling mistake in the name of the album, in the name of the artist, if the credits are correct. He's just literally going all, over all the, the letters which are used. Mm -hmm. Because if there's a mistake, you have an enormous rights problem on your, on your hands. <laughs> okay. And an enormous damage. Now you tell these guys, you know what? Write, that, write all the lyrics on, on, a, on a piece of tape. Mm -hmm. Well, then you have to hire two extra people just for checking of if there's no mistakes there. I mean, this is not a small thing. And if you make 120 titles, then you're not going to do it. So it was an option from day one. Okay. Well, thanks for that. And then he also brought a few, uh, which is text demo, which we're going to be super excited. All in all, uh, the guys hand over nearly 250 tapes. A lot of them are just one-offs. We have uh, 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 the combination is that Peter Dudson provided us with a uh, double CD, so it's a double slider, a double case, which had the cover art of Jimi Hendrix, but he didn't have the tape. Guess who had the tape? <laughs> So those two is like combined made one museum, and I couldn't believe when I saw the the, the uh, I've I've uh, I've That's never what what's happened to the person more than guys about sending pictures. He was making pictures in Harvard, and I was uh, yeah, having goosebumps in uh, in Los Angeles, and uh, so the, the the combination is perfect. Rotterdam, Harvard, it ended up in in Los Angeles, and. Um, we made a short video about it that will air in about uh, three weeks. This Friday is uh, Musella van der Stern uh, about, uh, about her interview. Jon, uh, you have tried this in, in, in the meantime? Yes, it works. It does? Yeah. Okay, but does it have Korean on it? No, I have a different one. Okay. <coughs> Part of the uh, tech project. Okay, uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Part of the text uh, uh, system problem was that it took us about one and a half year longer to get it standardized because we had to do all the Japanese and Korean language versions, mm -hmm. uh, kanji, and uh, uh, it proved to be a hell of a lot more complex than what we originally thought before we could deal with the entire world and all the languages. Okay. So the ones, the one saying uh, super trend, uh, text does work yeah. in a moment. Yeah. Misschien dat ik het nou weer But I, I told you that most likely if it will show up on the ITTS, which you at one point must have had. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. This is your favorite. show up on characters and whether it's in, 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 in sync. And it will definitely not show Korean characters on the ITTS box. Because those the special uses a DCC, uh, the, the ITTS box uses a teletext chip mm -hmm. that has only one character set, which is the European one. Mm -hmm. The last one you know, we have here, one that is uh, called text demo. Yeah, uh, that's very... And then we'll go to the, uh, to the audio. Um, because the artwork I made myself. Like oh, you say, so you, you did the artwork? I could make my own for sets. I was a bit like Jeremy. <laughs> I like doing the artwork, it's, it's one of the nicest. The case yeah, with the always women, is there a reason for that? Hmm? There is always women. Yeah. <laughs> there is a slideshow coming in 10 seconds. Oh, wow, look. You Ooh. see, this is, this is awesome.
but what is easy to see in the movie yeah, in, in text mode. An exact copy of what we have in the museum because it fits in the closet and in this uh, uh, furniture. This, by the way, is the original uh, furniture that was in the stores in the uh, early 90s. We yeah. found that. Um, that was what, what went to the back of the store. Yeah, there were so many. <laughs> 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 